MasterChef history. It's war. I am going to take this hot pan and smash it in her face. She needs to go. Final four. I have a 25% chance to win a quarter of a million dollars. It's so close. Wow, like, I am literally three people away from winning. And then getting this cookbook, like, aside from my kid, that's been my biggest motivation. There are just two mystery boxes in front of you. And behind you, there are just two stations set up. You'll be cooking this mystery box in two teams of two. With tonight's mystery box, you won't just be making one stunning dish. We want each team to prepare a composed, restaurant-quality, MasterChef-worthy three-course meal featuring the ingredients in those boxes. Your two teams will battle head-to-head. -head. The members of the winning team are going straight into the top three. The losing team will then face each other in the dreaded pressure test, where one person from that team will be eliminated. Seeing as this is a mystery box challenge, the person who will get first team pick is the home cook who has the most mystery box wins so far in this competition. That means with two mystery box wins, Luca, you have the privilege now of selecting your teammate tonight. This is the biggest advantage I ever had. Now I really have the game in my hands. All right, Luca, who are you gonna pick? Uh, of course, no brainer, I'm not gonna pick Chrissy. Jesse and Natasha are both very strong competitors, but me and Natasha in the past didn't get along that much. I pick Natasha. Natasha. We don't care for each other, one bit. Natasha and I have this drive for true sex that it's gonna be very tough for those two to compete with us. Worst nightmare just happened right before my eyes. I'm stuck with the thing. She doesn't work with other people at all. Like, she has no concept of team. Please, both teams, take your boxes back to your stations to find out exactly what's in there. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, wow. It's the most beautiful mystery box ever. This is like a chef's dream. The very, very best of ingredients that this country has to offer. Take a moment to look at them and absorb them all. You have Colorado lamb, Maine lobster, rainbow trout from the Catskills, Montana parsnips, Oregon beets, Napa Valley wine, Washington apples, Florida mangoes, and Hawaiian macadamia nuts. 50 states, 50 ingredients. Each team will have 90 minutes to prepare, cook, and present three stunning dishes using those incredible American ingredients. Watch your back. Your 90 minutes starts now. All right, give me your ideas. I mean, I'm thinking about, like, time-wise. Like, yeah, what's going to no. So Luca was able to put his personal differences aside with Natasha. They really don't like each other. There's two very strong minds trying to come together. For appetizer, I was thinking, how about we do like a beautiful halibut ceviche? Okay, can I tell you my, yeah, go ahead, my tell idea? Yeah. I think it's much better than, okay. okay. We have lobster tail, yeah. we have cloves, yeah. rainbow trout. We cut it like sashimi style, okay. we torch it, okay. we taste it. Okay. okay, it doesn't need anything else. So the red team. We've got a home cook from Philly with bold flavors. We've got the girl with the refined background in Social Circle, Georgia. Yes. How are they going to come together? Chrissy's not very popular. I just don't think a ravioli and then a lamb. So I don't think you're going to see a lot of cohesive right. cooking between Jesse and Chrissy. So I'm thinking if, like, greens with, like, a lobster meat or whatever and then, like, fry an oyster on top for garnish. Like, you know what I mean? Like I'm not like, seeing yeah. the picture, though. She has in her head what she wants to do. She's not considering anything that I have proposed, everything I say she nixes. Do like raw shaved asparagus with like a lemon vinaigrette. You know what I mean? I'm not 
seeing that Rosberg is part of that. It's like a flap in the face. I'm just not agreeing with you on that. Definitely. Right, blue team. Yes, yes chef. chef. Tell me the menu. So we are going to do a seafood medley salad. Um... A seafood medley salad. Sounds like the 80s. No, a seafood salad. A seafood salad. A seafood salad. What's the entree? A leg of lamb. Goat cheese and, and uh, beef. And what's the dessert? A strawberry tart. What's the base for the tart? It's going to be um, pastry. Okay, and have you made the pastry already? Nope, I'm going to do it right now. Let's go. Right, uh, Chrissy, what's on the menu? Cold lobster salad. What are you serving um, with lobster salad? We are going to shave some asparagus and. Um, What's that for? It's just to lightly dress uh, the lobster. Get okay, that doesn't taste very nice. You need something rich and citrusy and delicious, not something with raw garlic in there. What's the entree? We've got a rack of lamb that we're going to have an herb crust for. OK, dessert, what is it? Like an apple tart tan. Can you make a tart tan within 60 minutes? Uh, more of an apple tart. OK, how are you presenting the lobster salad? The lobster salad is going to be over um, the uh, beans. It's really weird. Why would you put green beans and asparagus in the same dish? You're, I didn't know you were doing the green It's beans just right. for... Hold on, hold on. You didn't know she was doing the green beans. I missed that part. I never... Ladies, heard. are you together? Yeah. It doesn't sound we like We will it. be. We will be. Yeah? Get it together. So what did you see out there? Chrissy and Jesse are all over the place. They're not even talking to each other. Oh, I've seen Chrissy getting the zest off that lemon for 10 minutes. Routine. They're still working a little bit behind because they're doing like a seafood platter. Opening all those seafood just for a sample doesn't make sense. The top four I'm showing signs of cracking under pressure. Sorry. 40 minutes gone. You've now got 50 minutes to go. Well, time flies in the MasterChef kitchen. Natasha. Hi, Chef. Do you think this is the dream team? Are you guys really number one and two cooks in this competition right now? That we are, yes. But if you lose, you'll be in the pressure test with Luca. Who wins? Obviously me. You've got the dessert and the short ribs right now, and I'm switching to the lobster. Is that what's happening? Yeah, I gotta get these apples working. Unbelievable. Have they even started making dessert? Uh, no, 50 minutes to go for each team, and they still haven't got their pastry nails. Dessert should be in the bag at this yeah. point. Yep, first thing you start working on. Okay, I'm so worried about this. <sighs> Look, it broke. I'm gonna just make a crumble. I'm gonna have to do it. Okay, okay, okay. Will you handle the dessert, please? I'm begging you. Is the crust done? It's right there. It's ready to be baked. Really buttery. It hasn't been wrapped in plastic. She didn't chill it. It's like raw butter. This is gonna just fall apart. We don't have enough time to make and chill another pie crust. I'm about to explode. Can you make a crepe? Make a crepe, yeah. I don't know how to make crepes. One and one fourth cup flour, three egg. Are you sure? Yeah, kind of. Last 10 minutes. Here we go. Jesse, I'm not comfortable making the crepes. Jesse, it's just sticking. I've never made crepes. I'm not familiar with them. I, Jesse, I am not comfortable doing the crepes. Babe, you abandoned me on the lobster, so you gotta pick something you can cook. What the f did you just say to me, bitch? I literally am gonna take this hot pan and smash it in her face. I have got to get out of this kitchen right now, or I am seriously going to go to jail today. Last 10 minutes. Jesse, I'm not comfortable making the crepes. It's just sticking. I, Jesse, I am not comfortable doing the crepes. Babe, you abandoned me on the lobster, so you got to pick something you can cook. What the f did you just say to me, bitch? I have got to get out of this kitchen right now. Or I am seriously going to go to jail today. She goes and throws a temper tantrum, and she quits. Whatever, I'm not going home. I'm just going to do it.
all of it. Jesse's been left to, to try to do everything. How is it, Jesse? It's rare. I'm just going to pan sear it. It's our only option. Wow. Two minutes to go. Oh, my gosh. Where's your beats? We have two minutes to beats. go. Beats? Beats. 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 We've got to start coming together now. Beats. I mean, the blue team are running way behind. Got to finish those plates. Blue team, please. Look, are you OK? Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't say OK. Why is the lamb not slightly on the blue team? Come on. What's he doing? My kid has never seen me give up. And I'm not about to do it now. I got to go back in there. I got to get something on the plate. <laughs> Embarrassing. I will see your ass in the pressure test. I'll kick her ass later, but now's not the time. I start to make a Chantilly cream. I grab a ring mold. I put these apples in it. Then I toast off the macadamia nuts. At least it's something. 30 seconds to go. Come on. Bring the beets if you have time. What do you need? The beets? Which ones? The beets. Where do you want them? On the plate. Got it. 30 seconds to go. Oh, my gosh. Got it. Luca, I have to finish that dessert. 10, oh. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and stop. All of you, hands up in the air. OK. Blue team, bring all three of your dishes up. Don't slip. Let's go. Appetizer, entree, dessert. So tell me what the dish is. It's a butter poached lobster. It's a barely cooked trout and a fried oyster. Avocado puree and mango sauce. Have you ever seen an appetizer like this in any restaurant you've ever worked at? Well, the idea was literally like a seafood and fish salad. I wanted to reinvent something like that, put in different and maybe unusual. It's definitely unusual. Unusually weird. Yeah, lobster is very good. And the, and the mango sauce is good. The uh, blowtorch on the trout, where have you seen that technique used before? Sushi. You know what? The trout might be better than the lobster. That was an excellent idea. You could have put that trout on some arugula with mangoes in it, with a nice little vinaigrette. It would have been delicious. It could have been great. I mean, it's very good. It could have been great. Uh, Natasha, describe the entree, please. Rack of lamb, bajou with some red wine, parsnip puree, and then we've got some roasted beets as well with it. That lamb, delicious. Puree is exceptional. Smooth, velvety. Plating, slightly sloppy. Not the best looking lamb dish. Um, can't really taste the beets because they're soggy in a way that they're sort of almost slightly overcooked. The puree is delicious. And the, uh, the cook on the lamb, yeah, beautiful. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, Luca. Hmm. Interesting. Explain the dish to me, please. A deconstructed strawberry tart. So we've got the pastry down on the bottom, and then we've got a beautiful vanilla pastry cream in the top, and then a strawberry compote on the top as well. Was that what was going to be the crust? It was going to, yes. What was wrong with it? Was it just falling apart? You know, I didn't put the egg wash on it after I'd put it in to, to hold it and bind it together, so that was my own fault. It's a little thick. Yep. It's not like a, a real creamy kind of deal. I know you're running short on time. Flavors are there, but obviously, kind of like the appetizer, where each individual thing on its own better than the sum of its parts. Sorry. I let myself down and I let Luca down. It's embarrassing on my part. It really is. Red team, please, Chrissy and Jesse, bring all three of your dishes. Thank you. What's the dish? It's a cold lobster salad uh, dressed with a light citrus vinaigrette and some basil oil. 
like a sundial. Who owns what on this plate? She started the vinaigrette, and then we couldn't quite get the flavors right, so I came back and redid it. Mm. I didn't know that Jesse redid the vinaigrette. So you thought yours was on here? Mm -hmm. Wow. What am I supposed to think? You guys are on the same team. You don't even know what you're serving. I quite like this dish. I think it probably needs one more thing. You know, instead of this ugly thing, I would have maybe put like some chopped mangoes or a little citrus salad. I mean, it's very good. I mean, this is a dish, an impressive restaurant dish. You know, uh, it's missing one thing. But I really like it, and uh, I think it tastes great. Thank you. OK, Jesse. Describe the lamb, please. An herbed rack of lamb on top of Swiss chard with a red wine jus, roasted yellow and red beets. Who seared the lamb? I did. All the fat, bright white, almost like you've cooked it for three or four minutes whole, and then I saw you chopping the cutlets off and then flash frying them in the pan. Right, I put it in whole and ran out of time. We didn't have time to cook it. The, the lamb was not cooked properly, in my opinion. Chrissy, why do you always let other members in your team take over and then say nothing, but then throw them under the bus when it comes to taking responsibility? I'm, I'm embarrassed because this reflects on me as well. You guys weren't even talking. I was so angry and frustrated at Did that point. Did you give point. up? I was losing my temper really badly. So you walked out? I, I had to go and take five minutes and calm myself down. So when she shut down um, the parts of the lamb dish that she was going to do, like the greens and stuff, I did because you weren't there. She comes back throwing and breaking plates, so I thought she gave up. I thought that the lamb was in the oven the whole time. I thought that she crusted it and it was in the oven. I had no idea that the lamb wasn't even cooked. At the rate we were going, if I'd left her to do what she said she was going to do, nothing would be on there. Whatever. And I had to finish the beets. I had to do the greens. I had to make the jus. I made the stock. I made the lamb. I made the crab oh. salad. Jessie was literally cooking for herself today. Everything that I suggested, it was just like, no, 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 I don't like that. Guess what, honey? You want to run the ship, you run the ship, and you can sink it, because you know what? Tomorrow, I'm just going to whoop your ass in a pressure test. You guys weren't even talking. What happened? I thought that the lamb was in the oven. I had no idea that the lamb wasn't even cooked. At the rate we were going, I'd left her to do what she said she was going to do. Nothing would be on there. And I had to finish the beets. I had to do the greens. I had to make the jus. I made the stock. I made the lamb. I made the crab oh, salad. OK, OK. I mean, the fact that you rallied round and got that lamb back in the pan, whose idea was that? I did that. OK, good, because that's nailed. That's cooked beautifully. Here's the thing, after all that turmoil, the actual lamb tastes delicious. I mean, I'm not expecting you to love each other, but as individuals, you're two very talented ladies. Unfortunately, tonight, it's like you didn't turn up. All right, walk me through it. Well, it was supposed to be an apple tart, but there was just no way to make another crust in that time. I think that you did the best with what you could do. They cooked well, they're seasoned well. It's not what we would have loved to have seen. It's super far from being a restaurant quality dessert, but uh, good effort. OK, uh, red team, blue team. Please, we need some time. Excuse us. Uh, difficult one. Yeah. Very difficult. Well, I think there's one clear team that sure. worked better. That it was, works, the team. Yeah. Although they had their shortcomings as well, they were more cohesive, they yeah. were more restaurant-y. Luca, a little bit ambitious, over-ambitious on the appetizer. Nothing's guaranteed, I'll tell you that much. Then you had somebody else on the other team that showed that they could almost do the entire thing by themselves. Oh, yeah. I mean, come on. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. For one 
team tonight, you're guaranteed a top three spot in the biggest culinary competition anywhere. The winning team tonight, the team that will be safe from elimination. Congratulations. Blue team. Congratulations. Top three. Ooh. I'm so close to a dream of become next American MasterChef. Really well done. Great team effort from the start to the end. And under no circumstances did any of you give up. Please, take your aprons off and head up to the gallery. Congratulations, you're now in the top three. Well deserved. Good job, guys. Thank you. Now oh, I hate you again. Jesse and Chrissy, you guys both know what this means. Tomorrow, you will battle head to head in a pressure test unlike any we have ever seen. Good night. I gotta go to another pressure test. And I'm just so angry. I'm so angry. Okay, this is getting real. Eh? Staying down there with that cow. Just, I know how hard it is, like what you just went through. She quit. She didn't know how to make a crepe. She didn't know how to do batter. She didn't know how to do milk, water, egg. She couldn't make the pie crust either. That's why she made me do it. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me right now? What? What, what, what happened? When? She, she, she what? You're talking about our parts in the We're talking about ours, like... Oh, uh, that's not what I heard. So I thought I'd come up and listen. I would like to go five miles away because it's a bomb waiting to explode. Not one of them will look at me. I heard you. I heard you talking <laughs> Don't be a bitch. If you've got something to say, say it. For the first time in my life, I'm excited about a pressure test because I'm excited to send this cow home. Honestly, it's war. The bitch needs to go. I want to kick her ass so bad. I'm coming for you, Jesse. I can feel Chrissy's glare burning a hole through my skin. I want to take her out. She's got to go home. The last challenge was a MasterChef first, a team mystery box challenge. Blue team, you won that challenge. You're both now safe. Jesse, Chrissy, are you two ready to find out what you will have to cook in this culinary cage fight? Tonight, you will have to perfect a world-class dessert. We are talking about chocolate mousse. Pure edible decadence. Amazing. Jesse, feel confident? I do. I'm actually excited. It's chocolate mousse. One more thing. I love chocolate mousse, but it isn't my favorite chocolate dessert. I prefer something a little more refined. Chocolate molten lava cake. There's nothing better than cutting into this moist, delicious cake. It's a MasterChef classic and one of my favorites. Unfortunately for you, I have a different favorite chocolate dessert. It is the most fearsome dessert in the whole <laughs> world. <laughs> a chocolate souffle. <laughs> 
This dessert is the most difficult to make out all three. Mm. Absolutely delicious. I want a chocolate souffle from heaven. You will have 75 minutes to make us three perfect chocolate desserts. All delivered at exactly the same time. Chrissy, any parting words for Jessie? She probably should have came in here with a helmet on. Jessie, anything to say to Chrissy? I love your idle threats. Jesse, Chrissy, please, head your stations. Ladies, at your stations, you have everything you need. Whole cream, eggs, sugar, vanilla, butter, and of course, chocolate. Are you two ready? Yes. Your 75 minutes starts now. I mean, 75 minutes to create three stunning chocolate desserts. That technical, I feel for them. Just technique and timing, impossible. I couldn't do it. Chrissy is a baker, you know, and she's a fighter, and she doesn't give up, usually. <sighs> Chrissy might actually pull this off. Jessie is very organized, clean. She has a plan in her head. I put my money on Jessie. Is there any technique that they can use or any product that they can make that will extend from the mousse to the molten cake to the souffle? No. You've got to start off with that mousse, get that set. Yeah, you know, you're going to be whipping up your cream, folding that in, your chocolate that's melted, and getting it set in the fridge. There's just so many different things that could make this go the wrong direction. Hers is kind of dense. Chrissy's more airy. Both the chocolate mousses in the fridge. That's the first monkey off their back. Now they've got to focus on the pastry cream and getting that chocolate molten lava cake. Come on. Right, Jesse, what's the one that you're most worried about? The souffle. Yours, the souffle. of course, being so technical. I'm just worried about getting the interior part right. So you're confident you can take out Chrissy? Yes, I am. On a personal front, how much do you want to do that? <laughs> she shouldn't have even been in top 10. <laughs> she needs to go home tonight. Right, Chrissy, how do you think you can have the advantage over Jesse? I'm a better baker. But you gave up last night. I just couldn't work with somebody that was treating me the way she was. Can you take her down with these three desserts? Absolutely. Show the molten lava cake. What could go wrong? The big balance here is that you can't overcook the inside. If it's not gooey and running, it's no good. You tip this thing out. 30 seconds undercooked, the whole thing can just disintegrate and be like a flat chocolate mess. The technical ability of naming that souffle is the incorporation of those egg whites, making sure you've got great momentum before you start adding the sugar in order to make sure you've got that stiff peak. Otherwise, it's not going to rise. Uh, this challenge is tricky. Batter's almost done on the souffle. I'm also going to add some salt to enhance the flavor. I feel really at home with all three of these. But with a souffle, anything can happen. I definitely going out fighting. Wouldn't be me if I didn't. Uh... Who is going to join the top three? You know, Chrissy's been in a pressure test five times. With her instincts as a baker, you'd have to bet on Chrissy today. Gordon, what do you think? Chrissy can definitely bake. There's no two ways about that. But there's something quite exciting about the technical ability of Jesse. Jesse's going to have the edge stone. Chrissy has the flavor. Jesse is the queen of time management. It's really anyone's game here. Just under 20 minutes to go. She is like 20 minutes behind. So some timing issues about getting those souffles. I think Chris is a little behind. She's buttering her ramekins, but her chocolate's not melted. Nothing's incorporated. But then you got Jesse just a few steps ahead, pouring that mixture into the souffle mold. None of them have them in the oven. They got a minute to get them in. Last 15 minutes. You've got to get your souffles in the oven. Jesse's are going in the oven. Let's see how they're both. Chrissy's, where, where are her souffles? She still doesn't even have the ramekin. She's so far behind. She's never going to make it. I have no time left, and I'm literally just putting my souffle mixture into the ramekin. Chrissy's are going in. I pop it in the oven, and I'm like, oh my god, it's not going to cook. Those souffles may be raw. We're going to get two out of the three desserts from Chrissy. Come on, please. 
Jesse and Chrissy are in a head-to-head -head battle for a place in the semifinal. Last 15 minutes. By making each of the judges' favorite chocolate desserts. An amazing chocolate mousse for me. A decadent chocolate molten lava cake for me. And a sumptuous chocolate souffle for me. Three of the most difficult desserts all at the same time. I hope this one wasn't over the limit. Ladies, last five minutes. Come on. The waiting game. This is the most frustrating part for any professional chef. Come on. Come on. Two minutes to go. Chrissy's souffle's out the oven. Can't be cooked. No. She was last going in there. Chrissy, you've still got two minutes left. Yep. Is that cooked? Yes, it's done. Chrissy is a good baker, but competition-wise, I want Chrissy to go home. She needed to be gone a while ago. You got this, Jess. Right now, strategically, I really hope Jesse goes home because it would make my way to the finale way easier with just Chrissy. 90 seconds to go. My lava cake might not make it in time. My mom lava cake is barely holding together. 30 seconds to go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and stop. Damn it. One second, she puts her plate down. Okay. She's saved. Jesse, Chrissy, stand behind your souffles. Thank you. I don't know who's going to win, and that's annoying because I wanted to blow her out of the water. Jesse, what am I expecting at the bottom of your souffle mold? Really rich chocolate batter. Little salt in the batter, which is something I like to do, salted chocolate. Chrissy, what am I expecting at the bottom of the souffle? Um, hopefully it's not undercooked. This is different. Usually they'll tell you what you did wrong and bring me out. And he said nothing. And I'm like, okay, whose was better? Chris is undercooked. The raw. I need three or four minutes in the oven. How's the Jesse's? Jesse's is fine. I had the balls to actually put salt in there and make a sort of salty chocolate can. It's really vast amount and it paid off. Jesse, Chrissy, for me, those souffles were the most difficult to pull off tonight. The souffle of the night, for me, belongs to Jesse. Congratulations. Adding that salt, lifting and elevating that chocolate richness, you nailed it. Delicious. And now, the chocolate mousse. Looking at the two, what do you think separates yours? I can tell mine's more airy than hers mm -hmm. just by looking at it. Thank you. Jesse's is denser. It's more like a pudding. Chrissy nailed it. I mean, not just better. There's no way that you can even improve on it. One person had the edge when it came to the actual texture of the mousse. The best chocolate mousse tonight belonged to Chrissy. Good job. Thanks. I have one win. If I made a better lava cake than Jesse, then I'm going to stay in this competition.
These are not quite what we were expecting. They have pre-exploded. This is more raw than molten. Honestly, thought it would hold together. The crispiness around the top is nice. I just wish there was more cooked through. We need some time to discuss this because we've got no idea who's going home and who's going into the top three. They were very, very, very close. Not really. Both undercooked. Jesse's crust is a little bit better. Chrissy's had a little bit more consistency throughout my palate. But, I mean, if I had to give an edge to one. Somebody had an edge? Yeah, by the slightest of margins. Obviously, both molten cakes had problems. They came down to the most minute of details. Based on those two chocolate molten lava cakes, the home cook joining the top three and entering the semifinal of MasterChef is down to the most minute of details. But one of them had that element of chew, that crispiness that we said was so important in this cake. The home cook joining the top three and entering the semifinal of MasterChef by the narrowest of margins is Jesse. Chrissy, this is very emotional, difficult for me. I've gotten to know you very well. I have to tell you from my heart, that was so close. It gives me goosebumps to have to make that decision. And it was literally one of the most difficult decisions, not only have I made it in this show, but maybe in my life. Chrissy, you came into this competition like a whirlwind. You've got the right to be arrogant. You've got the right to be cocky because you're a bloody damn good cook. Well done, my darling. Thank you. I'll do one more. I'll take one off your bucket list. When you and Mikey come to New York, you'll have dinner with me and my mom at Del Posto. Thank you. We can rehash this whole thing again. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Come here, you. I know you don't give hugs out that often, but <laughs> don't punch me. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done, well done, well done. Chad, let us hear you. See you in New York. Right, the question that you thought that we weren't going to ask you, who is going to win MasterChef? I think Luke is going to win. Luke is going to bring it home for the Italians. <laughs> well done. Please, place that apron on your bench and send Mikey our love, will you? I will. Take care, my darling. Thanks. Thank you. This experience has told me that I'm a lot better than I thought I was. I've learned more here than I've ever learned in 20 years of cooking. Yeah, that's as good as it gets. But I know that I stayed true to my roots through this whole journey. I wasn't fake. I was me all the way through. Everyone just calm the f down. Everything you better so shut the f up, Brian. Really? What are you going to do? The f out. I'm not going to apologize for anything. I'm definitely proud of what I accomplished. I think you found your voice in cooking. You're formidable. You're one to watch, let me tell you. I just really wanted to win for my kid. Everything I do is for my kid. 
Oh, you have an amazing mum there. Look I know her. I do. Well done, Chrissy. Even though I didn't take home the prize, I'm taking home a lot more to my kid. I always knew that I was a great cook, but now I'm a great chef. It's yours, Mikey. Next time on MasterChef. The final elimination challenge. The semi-final gets underway as the three best home cooks in America fight for a spot in the finale. That is terrorizing for even the best chefs in the world. Only two can move on. You have the grit to win the whole thing. For a chance to win a quarter of a million dollars. I've got to win it. Their very own cookbook. I'm going all the way. And be crowned America's next MasterChef. Win this trophy. You can accomplish anything. Ooh. Thank you.